Hi, I'm in San Antonio, Texas, ready to help a very large family. Let's take a look. Hi, we're the George family. I'm Joey Lynn, the mom. I'm Glenn, the dad. And I'm Samantha, their oldest daughter. I'm 20. We have five daughters and one granddaughter. Brooke is 17, Savannah is 10, Haley is six, Hayden is a year and a half, and our granddaughter Chrissy is two. And we all live together. I was 16 years old when I got pregnant with Samantha. My whole goal all these years was just to get Samantha through high school and to enjoy life, and it backfired. I got pregnant with Christy at 17, had her when I was 18. I gave up cheerleading. I didn't go to school like I planned to right after. I'll never forget, thinking to myself, I am 35 years old and going to be a grandmother. As a parent, it's one of the most difficult things that you can endure. Our granddaughter is actually older than our own daughter. Finding out I was a grandma was the worst day of my life. Don't hit the baby's legs. I'm the assistant director for a water company. Bye, guys. I spent most of my time at work 12 hours a day. You're going to stay right there. I work seven days a week. Bye, I'll see you all later. So I leave my daughter with um, my mom. Stop. I'm a stay-at-home mom and grandmother. And I'm here alone taking care of all the children. It's hectic, it's hard, it's stressful, and overwhelming. OK, but I can't carry two of you. Tyrant. I'm going to stop already. The constant fighting in this household Can y'all stop? is an everyday yeah. ordeal. She has no right to be talking. Why not? There's a lot of name calling. He's not even yelling at her because of that, you idiot. Teasing. You're ghetto. You're ghetto. Everybody's seriously angry in this house. It's mainly Samantha and Brooke. Yes. Nobody's talking to you. Shut up. Mainly Brooke. You are the biggest ever. They call each other from the B word to the F word. Can no. I just get along, please? No. Nope. No. The verbal abuse, it's in every sentence. It, you think that hurts? Yeah, shut the hell Yeah, up. well, shut quit up. being a crybaby. The little ones are watching, and they're just doing exactly the same thing. <laughs> Brilliant. Now everyone's arguing. Listen to me, Savannah. Savannah, I mean it. Stop. When it comes down to discipline, they don't take us seriously. Get down. Please. I do let them get away with more than what they should. Stop it. Just put them down. They know how to play and push my buttons and to get what they want. You allow it a little, and it just gets out of hand. Don't hit Don't. Her. Don't. Go they ahead. know that you can't discipline them. How come there's no discipline? I mean, no follow through. How are these kids meant to learn? I Do suggest... not be hitting me. No. <laughs> no. If this doesn't work, we're all going to lose it. <laughs> they want to get away from all this evil. Super Nanny, we need you now. You guys seriously need help. Hold on, I'm on my way before you kill each other. Oh, my God, does it really hurt? Hello. Hi. Hi, pleased to meet you, Jeff Ross. Hi, I'm Joey Lynn. Hi. Come in. Thank you. I was excited to meet Joe, and behind the excitement, I was nervous. I felt like a child in trouble. She's going to straighten you guys out. Thank Come you. meet the family. Thank you. Do we have guests? Hi, I'm Glenn. Nice, nice to, to meet you. Hi, Joe. Nice to meet okay, you. Okay, well, Hi. here you go. Here's the kids. Hi, I'm Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Nice to meet you. Hi. And you've got a little one, right? Yeah, this is Chrissy. Chrissy, hi, say Chrissy. hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I was happy that she was there, but nervous at the same time. Didn't know what to expect. Hi, Hayley. How are you? Hello, I'm Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Pleased to meet you. This is Hayden. Hi, Hayden. The pleasantries were wonderful, you know, you know. but trouble was arriving, and it was coming in full force. Savannah, what are you doing? I noticed right away that mum and dad was letting the younger children run completely wild. And when Savannah jumped up on the pool table, her older sister, Samantha, didn't really do much about it. Get down before Chrissy sees you and Haley, and then they all want to get, no. get down. Just yeah. answer me, why don't no. you listen? She did give up, and she called for Dad, who was playing with the younger ones in another room. I will wait till Dad sees you. But all he does is yell. Get off the pool table! Man, I mean, you better get off of there. There was no follow-through at all. 
Next, Haley started aggravating her sisters with some foam puzzle pieces. You better not. Don't hey. hit me. I'm going to hit you back. back. Hey, Why? Oh, Let it go. Oh, Let the it. older sister, Samantha, was messing around with the kids. Dad wasn't lifting a finger. And in the end, it was Brooke who disarmed Haley, who then went running off to Mum for sympathy. In there or up there? Or... Why are you teasing her? Why are you making her cry? I am so at my wit's end that it needs to change. I cannot continue to live this way. It's where I'm getting headaches every day. No, no, don't bop out. No, bop out. No, no, no. Uh, Hayden, no! Then things started to calm down a little bit, and Dad used an old trick to get some peace. Let's play the quiet game. Let's see who can be the quietest. I actually thought it was a good time to get his perspective on the girls. Glenn, what do you see when you look at these four on the sofa and you look at your daughters here? What do you see? I see that each one wants my attention, some form of way that I can't give. What can't you give? I can't give my undivided attention. Glenn doesn't feel that he can give his girls the time and attention that they need, but if he doesn't, they're going to start to get it somewhere else. You want some juice? I couldn't help but notice Hayden spends a lot of time attached to Mum's hip. Yeah. Right, do you want that cup? I feel like I'm not supposed to put her down. I'm not supposed to let her cry. What? Look at the water's boiling and I'm not ready to... <laughs> it's hot. Yep, it's hot. Mum passed off Hayden to Dad, but that's no real solution. That's going from one hip to the next. I guess it's kind of hard to make the food if you've got a little one on your hip. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And she knows it's hot, and that's why I have to tell them, because she'll be right here and it's, it's too hot. Mum also realises it can be a serious safety issue, so I am going to have to teach her how to get Hayden off her hip. I wanted to find out more about this broken-down relationship between the two older sisters, Samantha and Brooke, so I decided to sit down with Brooke first. You're feeling in a lot of pain because you're not feeling like you're connecting. Sometimes I feel I can't even go to her, and you're supposed to go to your sister, you know? But, like, she'll yell at me, like, if she's my mom. Like, I look at her and I'm just like, you're not my mother. Like, I don't even want, know why you try to be my mom. And then it was time to get the other side of the story. I can't give her no kind of advice. If I'd go up to her, she just blows up. It's nobody's business. Nobody can tell me what to do. This is my life. Why do y'all care? And it's almost like you're talking through a lump in your throat. What is it that you feel sad about? I don't understand how she can't. She don't talk to me. She won't talk to my mom. It's like she has nobody to go to. Did your parents kind of preach abstinence, like don't have sex at all with boys? Or did your mum and dad ever talk to you about kind of the responsibilities of it? They've never explained the responsibilities or talked about do it this way or this is the safe way. It's just don't do it. The fact that mum and dad were teenage parents themselves means that they should be having a very open conversation with their teenage daughters about sex. So I know at some stage, I'm going to have to sit down and have this conversation with them all. Later on in the afternoon, Savannah started to create a little bit of mischief with her younger sister, Hayley. Even after I tell Savannah to stop it three or four times. Don't hit me. Mommy, Savannah's hitting me in my face. Savannah, leave her alone. Savannah keeps on continuing to tease Haley. Oh, the face. Ow! Mommy! Daddy's coming! Daddy's coming! I mean, is this really happening? Mum doesn't want to step up and take responsibility in disciplining these kids. She wants to pass the buck on to Dad. No. Mm -mm. Well, he's not effective either. Come on. Discipline in this house is completely lacking, so I know I'm going to have to address this with them. Later on in the afternoon, I got a chance to really sit down with mum and dad and talk about Samantha being a teenage parent. I did everything to prevent that from Samantha. I had her involved in cheerleading. I had her involved in sports. So you got her involved in, in doing lots of sports so that she wouldn't have sex and fall pregnant? Yes. I don't want Savannah and Haley and Hayden to think, oh, well, when I get in high school, I become a senior and I get pregnant. We feel like we failed with Samantha. Is it something me and Glenn are doing? We thought that Samantha, if she had questions, that she would come and ask. So now we'd say, where did we go wrong? So do we just continue living the way we do? And when that happens again, we just accept it? 
But what they can do as parents is talk about accountability and responsibility in sexual behaviour as children are teenagers and become young adults. None of that had been done. Tomorrow morning, we are going to have a meeting mm -hmm. because I certainly do need to speak to those with children, which means, Samantha, you're in, OK? I know that the time is coming when she's going to come out, just laying the hammer down, just like going to the death chamber. All right, good night, everybody. Thank okay, you. Thank you night. very much. I was sitting there thinking to myself, what is she going to come and tell us tomorrow? What is she going to tell me? I was scared to hear that. I was fearful. Now it's the ass whipping time now. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to sitting down and having a family meeting with these three parents, Mum and Dad and Sam. I tell you, it can't come soon enough. So what I want to talk to you about are the issues that I've seen. When I walked into this home, I was hit straight in the face by so much animosity and hostility and anger. Nobody talks. When you get angry, nobody sits down and talks. There's been a lot of yelling and shouting where it's become aggressive. And you're, you're breeding that aggression throughout the whole of the family, down to Hayden and Chrissy hitting each other because they've grown up with it, they've seen it. It's just a cycle that it's normal. Which is absolutely crazy. Discipline's a, a big issue here because nobody is stepping up of authority here. Nobody's taking charge. Nobody's laying down any foundation. My kids know how to manipulate us. Oh, please, Glenn. That's, Glenn, that's what you they allow did. it. You yes, allow yes, it. We allow it, you're right. So what do you both do? to sit down and say, look, this is what we need to realise ourselves. These are our ground rules. We can't put our hands up and then go, oh, well, you know what, they bent our arm and, you know, they know how to do this. No, because you allowed it. So really what I'm hearing is our kids know how to get their own way because we wasn't responsible or accountable. You're copping out of your responsibilities. None of you want to do the hard work. I want to. I want to do that. How badly? Because I don't see you doing it. I don't know how. <laughs> then you'll be taught how. Okay. Let's talk about Samantha and Brooke. Not connecting as one should as close sisters. Brooke will say, I can't go to Sam because Sam will go and tell you. Like, she's not their sister. She's one of the parents. I wish I was a lot closer to Brooke. And she tells me numerous times, you know, I can't even run to you. I can't even tell you anything. So I feel more like I'm pushed away because of that. The reality is, how much trust is there in this family? I'll answer that question. There's none. None of you trust each other. That's the truth. I want to talk about teaching responsibility. You're talking in front of Samantha like she's a failure. She got pregnant, but there was no grounding teaching her as a, a young woman about responsible decisions and planning. I thought to myself, if I talk to her about sex, then she thinks it's OK to have it. So no conversation about it, and just telling her to abstain from any kind of sex led her to being pregnant. I'm not sitting here saying that it's acceptable for young teenagers to be having sexual activity, but you've got to be talking. Now let's stop talking and let's start working. I'm willing to bend in any direction I have to. Good, because trust me, I'm going to bend you. Trust me, I can bend you as well. Oh, I'm going to bend. Yeah. So, I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. The first thing I want to do with the George family is to establish some house rules. I have here, get with the memo, OK? So it's a little British saying, we say get with the memo. And uh, this memo is all about house rules. So let's throw up some ideas. The house rules was something we really needed, something that has never been there. No yelling. How could we discipline somebody when they don't know that they broke a rule? The three parents filled out the rules, and then I had them explain it to the younger kids. Anna, how are you? The first house rule and this is for everybody. No cursing. 
No name calling. They seem to be in shock, like, what, we have rules in this house? We're gonna have rules? They were in disbelief. No getting on top of the furniture, no getting on top of the counters. What if I need to Jump read something? Sofas. Ask. The demonstration of the memo, I think it is gonna work. Along the way, we're gonna derail from those, but we're gonna pick each other up. We're gonna get right back on the trail. Now with rules in place, these three parents do need to be taught how the timeout works and the importance of discipline instead of passing the buck. At snack time, I had the opportunity to teach Samantha how to give a proper warning to her little one, Chrissy. Hey, you don't say that, okay? Joe explained to us that when they break a rule or they're doing something bad, that you go down to their level, make eye contact. Hey, do you want me to put you in the naughty spot on the stairs? Do you want to sit there? Don't threaten it, but just move her around and say no saying that. If you talk like that being rude, then I'm putting you straight on the naughty step, OK? So don't threaten it. Deliver what you're going to do if she continues. OK. So follow through on that with her. Hey, I'm going to sit you on the naughty step if you say that again. I don't want you to say that. That's a bad word, OK? Chrissy got the message pretty fast. And she stopped that behavior. And then Samantha went off to work, leaving Grandma in charge. But that's when Chrissy started to play up again. Ow! What did, what did she do? She, I think she bit me or pinched me. You don't pinch Haley no. or bite. Or I'm going to put you on the naughty step. No, no, no. Nope. And when Chrissy kept hitting, it was time for Grandma to step up and follow through with time out. Sit her on the step. Come Explain on. what she's there. Come on, you're gonna come sit on the naughty step because you were hitting no, Haley. No, no, yes. No, come on. No, no, come on. Come on. No, no, sit her on the step. Explain why she's there. Listen to Grandma. Oh Listen. God. You don't hit Haley. You have to sit here. Because you hit oh Haley. God. Stay right here. Look, move away. Move away. Set your alarm. It was kind of hard because that's my granddaughter. She's my baby. Walk her back. Come on. Sit on the first step. No talking to her mum. No talking to her, just put her straight back on the first step. She kept crying after me and after me, and I just wanted to cry. Move away, just move away. Every time she'd cry out to me, it was hurting, breaking my heart. Mum, look, watch, look at her. I showed mum exactly what to do, and I took Chrissy by the hand and placed her on the step where she stayed for the two minutes. The two minutes are up, you go back and you explain again, OK? OK. Sorry, hugs and kisses, and then she can get back up again. Mama. All right. Grandma put you on the naughty step because you hit Hay because you hit Haley, OK? Tell so, so Grandma you're sorry. Say you're sorry. You're sorry? OK. okay. Kisses. Okay. She still loved me. I disciplined okay. her, and she still loved me. OK, let's go. You went. That just leaves Dad. He had an opportunity to discipline when his girls were playing outside. But he doesn't seem that interested in doing anything. Savannah's behaviour, why do nothing about it? I am. I was just, I'm going to calm these girls down. Warning. Go that's, over and give that, her a warning. That's your warning, Go right there. Go over and give her a warning. These kids are fine. Go and give her a warning. Look. Dad gave Savannah a warning about her bothering her sisters, but she didn't listen to him at all. And so he decided to take all of the girls inside and do what he thought was best, more talking. What I don't want you to think that it's OK to smack Haley. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. She knows it's wrong right. to hit Haley. She does. But she does it anyway. I had a discussion with her yesterday. The discussion ain't working, mate. No disrespect or nothing, Glenn, but you've been using this chitter chatter chitter chatter for how many years? Where's it got you with Savannah? Like, seriously, where has it got you with her? Dad just needed to stop talking and take action. So I decided to show him what that entails. Savannah, come here, please. On the step. Right now. I do not find it funny that you think it's OK to hit your sister across the head is unacceptable behaviour. I expect you to sit here for 10 minutes and think about what you're doing, because every time you behave that way, you are going to be disciplined. Do you understand me? I expect you to use your voice. Yes. OK. That was a rude awakening, not only for me, but I think for Savannah. Just by what she demonstrated, that's exactly what Savannah needs.
You've got to put action in. I don't want to hear too much talking. Yeah. OK, you talk a good talk, but I want to see you walk a walk now. When Savannah's 10 minutes were over, we went back to wrap things up. So I do want you to apologise for your father, OK? And you do need to apologise to your sister as well, cos it's unacceptable. You know, all I, all I want is, like... Follow the rules. How, how Follow we the were... steps. Follow the steps. You can have a conversation about this afterwards, OK? Every time, every time that you... The steps, Glenn. The steps. Dad definitely needed a guided hand, but he did successfully complete the time out. Sorry. Won't happen again. He does still have a lot of work to do, though, so it's going to be interesting to see if he can pull it off. Sorry. I'm still OK. <laughs> There's a lot of bad communication going on in this family, and it's all fueled by serious anger. We've got Samantha, who's a teenage mum, okay. and the two older sisters are not talking to each other. So, this is what I have for you. The George Family Journal. You are going to write into this journal all the wonderful things that you are now starting to see and all the things that certainly need work on. It's important that we diffuse the confrontations that are happening, like, every 15 minutes in this house. You will come to the family journal and you'll write down all the positives and the negatives that you're seeing. And at the end of every day, you will sit around the table, the four of you, and discuss the issues that are in this book. Throughout the day, the family wrote down the good and the bad in the journal. So I'm very curious to see how it plays out later on. OK, can you put your plate in the kitchen for me? My next move, really, is to deal with Hayden being attached to Mum's hip. I mean, how can you get anything done when you've got this going on? And also, it's a safety issue. So what I want to do is to introduce the off-the-hip technique with Mum. Put her down, come down to her height, and then say to her, Mummy's going to be busy cooking. You play with some of your toys. OK. <laughs> Hayden, listen to Mummy. Listen to me. Listen to Mummy. <laughs> Hayden bawled her eyes out. You know, she wasn't happy with the idea that she couldn't sit on Mum's hips. Hayden, I'm going to make Papa for you. I have to make dinner. <laughs> it was hard seeing my baby cry. It's OK. Look, Mommy's right over here. That's why she was always on my hip. I don't want to hear my baby cry. Mommy can't carry you. I have to make dinner, OK? It was breaking my heart, and I didn't want to look at her face, because if I saw her tears coming down, that was going to bring my tears coming down. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, Mom. So you're cooking here, and that oven may be on. So move away from the oven, darling. This is hot. This is very hot. Let's, we're going to walk over here this way. I'll just move it to the side. It's hot. We have to stay right here. OK, lovely. <laughs> if you just put your child down for one moment, the child's not going to feel like you don't love him anymore. And once Mum understood that, she continued, and Hayden just gave up after a while. Yeah, you've got lots of pans. I feel great about being able to have Hayden off my hip. I get freedom. I get my own little space. I get a healthier back. I get to be able to accomplish something a lot faster than it was being done before. You did a fabulous job with off the hip. I know. Oh. So keep going with it. OK. The next thing I really want to work on is this strained relationship between Brooke and Sam. I do believe I have a technique that will help them. I want to give you both the opportunity to write a letter to one another about how you feel about each other from here, OK? And when you've done that, bring me your letters. Writing letters will be a way that these sisters will be able to express how they've been feeling, and then they can convey that to one another without bickering like they have done. I knew this is the time to say what I'm feeling. I felt pretty good about saying everything because I knew if I were to tell my sister face to face, she would just fight with me about it. So let's just read our letters and take it from there. Let's just uh, go with it. Sam read the letter I wrote to her. Sam, I feel like all this time we've had together was a waste. I mean, we spent most of the time fighting over stupid things. I felt like the only time you wanted me around was to watch Chrissy when you'd go out. I could tell she was real hurt, but I just wanted to let her know that I was hurt by the way she treated me. There's been so much I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't because it would get out and everyone would know. We're not the sisters I wanted us to be. You're like the friend I can't stand at times, but I would honestly like for us to get closer and act like real sisters for once. 
do you feel reading a letter like the one that you've just read from your sister? It hurts, but I don't blame her. There's no communication. We've never talked. It's like I've been against her rather than on her side. It makes me want to be a better sister. You want to read yours? Yes. Brooke, I know we haven't gotten along for a while. I hate that things are this way. It hurts me that you can't run to me as your older sister because you're afraid. I admit that it's my fault. I made you feel like you can't trust me, like your feelings don't matter to me, and they do. Love you, Sam. Sam's letter said to me that she's sorry for the way she is. She wanted to change, and I, I like the fact that she's really trying on that. I love you, and I would help you with whatever you need. You know that I'd do that. Everything you just said made me realize that you care. I never really expected you to be there, and I feel like you are. Give me time. In the future, I feel like we're still going to continue being open with each other. I could see it in Brooke's eyes that she was happy. I felt that she understood what I was saying. At the end of the day, I brought out the family journal so that mom and dad and the two older sisters could discuss what they had wrote. Rules not followed. This is when I was upset. Samantha was disrespectful to me. I, I was just frustrated yep. and took my anger out on you instead of just Mommy. letting you know why I was such in a bad mood. Mommy. And did we step up? Mommy. I did. We talked, and I talked to my dad, too, about it in the car. Nice. All right. It was good stuff. What was really nice about this conversation was how everybody was talking to each other so nicely, so respectfully, so polite and considerate to everybody else. We were smiling, we were laughing, we were communicating, we were talking about even the bad stuff in a civil way. And if that's going to be the way it's going to be, then it's going to be great every day. I am going for several days. In that space of time, I am expecting you guys to really hold down fault with everything that's been taught. The biggest challenge with Joe being gone is the off the hip routine with Hayden, because she's my baby. Recognizing when a warning is necessary, following through with discipline. I think my dad's going to struggle with discipline. When you put anybody in the naughty spot, you just tell them why they're in there and walk away. Well, my dad doesn't walk away. Savannah. I hope you're not going to keep that naughty step warm. <laughs> when she left us, Joey and I looked at each other and said, hey, it's do or die. I really do hope that George family keep up their communication whilst I'm gone, because when I come back, this family do need to discuss sex education. This family had some serious work to do whilst I was gone. I wonder how it panned out. Who's ready? I'm ready. We're all ready. OK, our first clip we're going to take a look at is Mum Time Out. Tell everybody you have to, else to get it. You have to listen to your mom. No! That's a warning right now. And if you don't I get up and go and get it, you're going to go and sit I, down. Well, you're, 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 no more talking. You don't have to give me the pamper no more. Now you're going to have to go and sit down for 10 minutes. OK, you're going to sit right here. <laughs> what? Wait out the stairs! No. No, she's in trouble right now. She's going to sit there for 10 minutes. I sat you here because I asked you more than once to get me a pamper and you disobeyed, correct? Yes. OK, now you tell me you're sorry for not, I mean, what are you sorry for? Not getting a pamper. Not doing as you're told. OK. I'm actually glad that you put that into perspective because, I mean, she laughed and said, it's a pamper. That's no different to you asking her to get something for you that's not to do with the baby. It was the fact with exactly what you were saying. I asked you to do something and you just didn't want to listen and do it. So I'd like to say, you know, salute to yourself in doing that. Right, so we're going to take a look at yourself, Glenn, here and see how well you did with the time out. I think she already got a warning earlier. Put your DS up. No, why don't you? Now. Yeah. Put it up now. <laughs> You know what? Just for that, I'm, I'm, you know. Sarah, you're no. hurting me. Well, I asked you. I asked you to walk over here nicely. Well, you're also dragging me. You hurt me. We had to talk to her. Walk, walk away. Walk away and let her be there ten minutes. 
Savannah, where are you? Uh, Sit down on the stairs. Like I told you, every time that you move from here, me. I'm going to start the clock all over what again. Like that? Hey, listen, Just sit there. That. Let's try it again. Another 10 minutes, yeah. OK? Yeah. You're going to be sitting here all day long until you get it right. I'm... And I'm taking this away for the rest of the day. Yeah. You stay too long. Stay <laughs> I'm going to let you up from here. OK, but throughout the day, Did you, read it? you need to keep oh, your yeah. hands off of everybody. Look, I don't want to hear any good. name calling. I don't want to hear no teasing. Now, I want you to tell me you're sorry for acting up the way you did this morning. Sorry. No, look at me and, and mean it. Mean it. Are you squatting down to her? Acting up. Oh, dear, I'm tired. <laughs> so am I. My word, I, that I was spent, draining. I spent too much time with her. Um, they're going back and forth. You think? Yeah. And then your family said, walk away. Yeah. You didn't listen and you stayed there. That was not a time out. That was pathetic. Yeah, and she, she actually got up from the step and, and ran upstairs. That's why I went to go. Glenn, it's very simple. It's a few steps and you follow them and done, finished. Definitely, I have to change that. You've got your family who are remembering certain bits and they're actually reminding you. So take heed of that. Yeah. Um, I had a question. So when, I mean, just in case Chrissy does this, like when she would run up there, was he just supposed to grab her and put her back on the step and just walk away? Just, you just keep doing that? Yeah, no communication. So let's take a look at off the hip. I didn't. That's it, I didn't like it. She's on the hip, Mom. Yep, exactly. But I'm just, yeah. I'm really not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. You're doing the back? Sit down, we're late, we're late. Stay right huh? here until I finish, OK? Yeah. I'm going to get you in a minute. Let me, let, me, let me finish rinsing it. Let me finish rinsing it. Let me finish rinsing this, and we'll get you, OK? I'm almost done. We've come far from crying hysterically yes. to literally her accepting the fact that you've got Wait. things to do. Exactly. And obviously the family are doing a good job at supporting. So just keep going with it. You know, she is going to get to a point where she's going to be too heavy. Yes. Or your hip's going to get... She actually is already getting too heavy, yes. <laughs> there has been some good progress that's been made with this family. And yes, Glenn is going to need some more of his family's help when it comes to time out. But right now, I do need to talk to this family about something far more serious. Thank you. <laughs> Why don't we just grab a cup of coffee somewhere a little bit more relaxed? Because there's something that I want to talk to you guys all about. When I first met the family, Mum was absolutely petrified. The girls would grow up following in her footsteps, having children extremely young, and I know that she wants them to certainly think about other goals. Well, listen, I've brought you guys here to kind of wind down and have a really nice casual conversation about babies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll define that. Sex education. I just thought it was absolutely valuable that these two older daughters give advice to their parents to help them with the younger girls when it's time. You know, there are teenagers now who are thinking at the age of 12, 13 of experimenting. I was just thinking that sex wasn't talked about amongst girls till like the age of 16. Now that I see it or lived it, yeah. when they're at the ages in middle school, 11, 12 years old, that's like a big topic. And then once you get to the age where you're thinking that they're doing it is when it's just natural to them. Like one of my friend's little sisters, she's in middle school, she's in seventh grade. She's already having a baby, she's almost due. I mean, to have your heads in the cloud and not be realistic with basically what you're hearing and seeing is to not be responsible as a parent to educate. There's education I know, at I, school. I had like what age are they teaching it? 14, 14. Exactly. There are kids at 14 that are, are having babies that are pregnant at 14. As a parent, you've got to look at the things that you can control. If we all realise that actually we need to be taking things into our own hands and having conversations earlier, we're not talking about Haley's age, but yeah. you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. If we start having these conversations earlier, then we know as parents that we're doing something. We never talked about birth control. I didn't even know how birth control worked. I was never given to me. It was never offered to me. I mean, you've never even told me, don't do it. It's just like, I knew what it was. It's just never, it was just never talked about with me. Sometimes it's just overwhelming. I just want to protect them and, and, and you know, give them the best advice that I can. A daughter wants to please. OK, and wants, wants that permission and acceptance from her father because you are the first role model that they have with regards to men. 
You become closer through having these conversations so that they grow into young ladies who are not looking, you know, for that acceptance in, in other men when really they're looking for it with their own father. At first, we really didn't think we could do it, but now I feel I could go to my parents and talk to them without them getting mad at me. I feel like they would take their time out of the day to listen to each and every one of us if we have something to say to them. Now that Dad has shown so much promise in listening to his daughters, I brought in a technique that will really help him to establish some time to give to them. It is so important that he gives them the attention that they need. I've created this board for you so that each day of the week here, you can make time to enjoy with each and every one of your children. It's not really about the quantity of time, but the quality. Even if it's just 20 minutes and it's consistent, that's what counts. Joe made a good point that girls look up to their fathers. And sometimes when that father doesn't give that attention that the daughters are yearning for, they'll try to find it somewhere. Hayden, you're always with because when you come home, you're looking after her and you're playing with her. So what I have here is Brooke, Savannah, Hayley and Sam. So placing these cards into your little take the time board allows you to remember, I'm going to take that 20 minutes or that half an hour and I'm going to do something that's quality with them. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think that's one thing that I'm going to stick to. Work, it's going to be work. It's, it's going to be there when I get back. But that precious time, you'll never gain it back. Commit, make that time for them. Let them know that they're special and loved. I believe that he'll actually realize how badly he needed this. And it's a win-win situation for both dad and the girls. Oh, they're going to be excited when they see that. So, guys, my work's done here, but your work's just begun. I wish you much success. Work together, communication, and be kind to one another, please. You're all on the same side. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I have great hopes for the future. With everything Joe has taught us, we have actually been able to communicate like we've never had before. Take care Bye. of yourself, OK? Keep talking to mom and dad. I, f I feel really grateful that Joe came into our lives to help us. Everybody's a lot, they're like different people now. Glenn, take care. Same bite to Joe. It was an emotional moment for me. She's taught me so much. Remember, listen, OK? I will. I've really enjoyed my experience working with this family because it has been amazing to see Joey step up and Glenn understand that he needs to listen to communicate thoroughly.